What's up YouTube, Georgia Silver Hunter back and today we're going to do a really small $40 nickel hunt. It's a lot smaller than I normally do. Normally we do a whole box or at least enough customer wrap rolls to make up a whole box, but this is all the bank had, so this is what we got. And uh, this will be part of our hunt and fill series because if you've been following the channel, you may know we've been trying desperately to fill out this Whitman Jefferson Nichols album from 1938 to 2003 and I've actually put the extra pages in it to get us through 2021 and I'm really just missing and it's kind of hard to see with the holes but I'm just missing a handful of nickels all the way up to about 1950d other than that it's all San Francisco proofs which I'm not expecting to find in circulation so we're looking kind of for that 38d 3090 39s a handful of war nickels and this 1949s and 1950d and the 50d I think is a key date so that one's going to be tough to find but with that, we're gonna go ahead and jump into these rolls. All right, so before we jump into these, I did wanna say we will be using our fifth edition Strike It Rich book to try to identify any errors or varieties that we may come across. My checklist in the description down below this video includes most of them from 1964 and earlier. However, in the Strike It Rich book, there are some additional ones like the 68D, 72D, 81D. There's a bunch of them in here. So at the end of the day, we will be using this book to uh, also look for some new things that we don't always look for. I do have my handy dandy microscope over here to the side. And of course, we will need a scale that gets down to the tenth or hundredths of a gram. This one, was, this one does tenth of a gram because we're also going to be look out for Henning nickels. And I don't remember the exact years. They are in the document, the description down below. Uh, but there's about five or six years in the late 40s and early 50s, I want to say, uh, that were faked. Henning nickels are just basically fake nickels. And uh, they typically, I want to say they weigh more. They might weigh less. I'm going to look that up because I mainly just look for the years uh, and then weigh them as I find those particular years. The other thing that we're really paying uh, uh, paying attention to or looking out for would be our war nickels. And those are 1942 to 1945. And uh, most 40, 30s, 40s, and 50s nickels will have the uh, mint mark over here on the right, which this is a more modern one. This is a 2019, but the mint mark would be over here on the right on say like a 1946 nickel. But your war nickels, the mint mark is up here above the Monticello building. So that's what we're looking for. And 42 was a split year. Um, so you do need to look for that mint mark. So some 42s are just nickel clad. And some 1942s are in fact 35% silver. Now I did do a little like five roll nickel hunt a couple of weeks ago. And I didn't film it. And I actually did happen to find one war nickel. So... I have thrown that in my treasure chest, even though I didn't film it, so it's not something you're gonna see on the channel, but not bad for just a little tiny nickel hunt. So I'm going through these real quick on camera, just this first roll. The rest of the rolls, I'll go off camera, and depending on how it's going, I may bring you in for some future rolls, uh, but right now it's just kind of the painstaking search to try to find those years that might have something interesting to look at, and a lot of these are modern. Um, the new 2023s do have a lot of errors on them, so lots of die chips in the building. Um, I think there's some, uh, I think they're called die trails. Um, there's a DDR on it. There's a lot of cool stuff to look for on the 2023, so I always give those a second look, but nothing in that role of interest, so I'm going to keep on hunting, and hopefully I'll bring you in early and often. Well, we're about, I don't know, five rolls in, and uh, we have found our first find, and it's nothing too spectacular, but we're up a nickel. We got stuffed with a 2014 Philadelphia dime, so I'll take two nickels instead of one. And I did have one kind of miscolored guy. Let's look at that together. No, that's just a 2020 that's miscolored. You'll find on your war nickels that a lot of times they are kind of grayish or green or... I don't know, they just have a different color. So once you find a couple of them, you'll start getting real suspect of, of any kind of nickel that's really off color. Because a lot of times that's just how they present after being, you know, whatever, 70 years old, 80 years old. Um, so with that, it's been real slow. Lots of new, lots of new nickels, 2021s, 2020s, uh, nothing too old. I think a 1968 might have been the, the oldest nickel we have found so far. 
We're on roll number seven, give or take, and uh, just got this one laid out, and just this one jumped out at me really, really quickly. Again, if you're new to coin roll hunting, these are the kinds of things that you're not going to see probably when you first get started, but color, sort of wear on the rim, the sort of sheen on the coin, it just sort of jumps out at you as, hey, I really need to take a look at that. Now, this one in particular, uh, I've already looked at just to make sure I was right, but it looked really interesting when it came out of the roll. It is a Denver, and it is a 1954. And anything 1959 and earlier, I do hang on to. Uh, they are just, they're older nickels. They're harder to find. They're, at least they're getting harder and harder to find. And actually, they're a pretty good source of copper. So if you're a copper hoarder, uh, it's not such a bad thing to have, you know, a nice-sized collection of nickels. Uh, so this 1954D, I'm going to check the book to see if there's any varieties on this one. I'll check it out, and if I find anything, I'll be sure to bring you back in. So actually, I haven't looked yet, but I did want to bring you in just to show you the book a little bit. So 1954D, we can see there's a repunched mint mark. If you can find a circulated one, that's pretty sweet. They're going to start between $40 and $70, according to this book. And, you know, this was printed two years ago, so maybe they've come down. But it presents with a repunched mint mark there in the middle of, uh, middle of the original D, I think. And let's see here. There's also a 1954 double die reverse that you can see up here in pluribus so for fun let's go ahead and check this one out under the scope just to just to see how we're doing here and i'm kind of zoomed way in let me let me zoom out a little bit so that d is destroyed enough that we wouldn't be able to tell if we had a doubled uh or a repunch mint mark at all and then pluribus i'm not even seeing it being thick much less doubled so don't have it here, which I didn't expect to, but just wanted to show you what it would look like under the scope. So we've gotten into the very next roll, and the first coin out is another find for us. It is a 1959 that has seen better days, for sure, and it looks like it is a Philadelphia, and the 1959 Philadelphia does have a double die reverse. Like most of the double die reverses on uh, nickels, it should present itself in the word pluribus. Now, I know that like the 1938 and the 19, I think it's the 39 as well. There is a doubling down here in the words Monticello in five cents. But a great many of the DDRs do present up here in E Pluribus, and we don't have it on this one. I think we're on roll number nine, if I'm doing my math right here. Uh, we found ourselves actually a really, really nice looking 1958. That might be a book upgrade. We're definitely going to hang on to that and check. It is a Philadelphia, but uh, super nice 1958. So we are all the way up here. We've got seven rolls left, which I guess that means we're on roll 13, and we've come across our next find, and it's a pretty nice-looking one, too. It's a 1957 Philly. I don't believe this one has any kind of uh, DDOs or DDRs. We're into roll number 15, and we've come across another 1957. It was actually just the second coin off the roll. So 1957, looks like we have a Denver. So got the Philly and the Denver 1957 in this hunt. On roll number 16, and we're on our next find, and I think it is our oldest of the hunt. Got ourselves a 1948. Looks like a Philly. Got a little mark on there. A little something under the 1948. That's just some junk. All right, well, no DDOs, no DDRs on this one, but I'll take it. So we are on roll number 17, and for those of you wondering, my Rubik's Cube's been moving around up here because I'm using it to hold my book open. I know it's a silly thing to use, but it's what I had handy. But uh, roll 17, is that right? 17, 18, 19, 20. And I got it out and was looking across, and something dark and weird looking showed up here, and we've got our first buffalo nickel find, and it looks like somebody's taken a drill bit to it, so it's pretty much good and damaged. Looks like they've actually done it on both sides. Not sure why, but uh, we are dateless, and what I'll probably do by the end of the video is throw a little nick -a date on that to see if we can get the date off, just to see what we have, since it's already ruined. But uh, for those of you that don't know, nick -a date is a very light acid that actually eats away at the nickel on this and can leave um, a little bit of the date that was uh, worn off behind. So we'll take a look at that before the end of the video, and I'll probably do it on the back too to see if we could find a mint mark. So we're all the way up here on roll 19, and this is not a huge find, but I want to call it out for you new coin roll hunters that may be watching. 
The 2009 Philly and Denver Nickel, I actually have a hard time finding decent quality, quality ones. Granted, we are a long way away from 2009, but these are extremely low mintage. 2009, kind of across the board, was a low mintage year for the mint. And I've got my red book out just to show you the mintages here. So, you know, 2006 P&D, we're like over a billion minted between the two, 693 million and 809 million. We get up here to 2008, you know, again, 345 million, 279 million. But look at 2009, 39.8 million and 46.8 million. So the 2009 P was actually the lesser minted of the two. And you'll see even in the price, a mint state 63 in most of these, they're saying they're a quarter, which again, you're not going to get find anyone to give you a quarter for a Mint State 63 nickel these days because to find out it's Mint State 63, it's probably going to cost you about 20 bucks in grading fees. But a 2009, they're saying an MS 63 is worth about $3, which is way better than a quarter. And you could just see that trend all the way down. 2013, there was 1.2 billion. 2014, 1.3, or sorry, 1.2 billion between the two. So Keep your eye out for those 2009s and hang on to them. So I contemplated filming dumping out this last roll, and I didn't, and I wish I had, because as I was laying it out, like that one time before, we get to the end, and something doesn't look like everything else. And this actually looks like it's going to be in decent quality. I haven't seen the year yet, but judging from the reverse, this is a buffalo nickel in fantastic shape. You can even still see some of the horn up here. Granted, not at the top, but at least coming out of the head. What do we have here? We got ourselves a 1937 Buffalo Nickel in fantastic shape. This guy looks really, really good. Probably one of the nicer Buffalo Nickels I have ever found in circulation. So that is pretty cool. Let me uh, look this up in Red Book. Let's see kind of a value on this just in general to give you guys an idea and uh, see how many of these were minted. All right, well, here's our 1937. I would say this thing's probably, I would say kind of easily, granted we've got a little ring dam or rim damage in there, but I would say this is easily in the VF20 to maybe VF30 range. Our 1937 with no mint mark, 79,480,000. And let's see here. Let's say VF20 to EF40 to give me a little bit of room in here. It's only a $2 to $3 nickel but I'm sure I could sell this for more than a nickel since it is such a nice 1937 Buffalo. Well, that is 20 rolls or $40 worth of nickels. And honestly, not too bad considering it was just short of half of a box. We had a couple of decent sort of 38 to 59 finds. We did have one that I pulled to check against my book for an upgrade. I came across this just beautiful 1970D, and unfortunately, the one I have in my book is already nicer than this one, but I'll probably just flip this up and hang on to it because it's so nice. Um, but I will say sort of the star of the show, you don't find that many buffalo nickels these days, and to find two in just 20 rolls is pretty amazing. I absolutely forgot to nickadate this before we got to the end, so I'll do a little cut in here in the video so you can see what the date is if I could pull one off. But uh, we did end up making one extra nickel during the hunt with this 2014 uh, Philadelphia dime, which I will hang on to for sure. Well, I'll, I'll spend it because it's pocket change. But to recap the fines, we had ourselves a 1948. I'm not going to go through the mint marks because I don't remember them all. We had a 48. We had a 54. We did have the 57 P and D because I remember calling that out. We had a 1958 that is actually an upgrade for my book. I did check that. The 1958, and it's a Philly, I believe is not this nice. And we have ourselves a 1959 that's pretty cruddy. Now I hang on to all of these by year and you can see in the back I have a shoebox sort of that uh, has all of the nickels that I hang on to and I got that from Wizard Coin Supply. So each tube back there is labeled and uh, I don't keep them separate P and D. I just have like a 1948 tube and a 1949 tube and so on and so forth. So that's how I stack up and keep all of my nickels. And when I fill a tube, I wrap them in a regular uh, piece of, uh, you know, a regular paper wrap. I uh, label them and they go into some different storage. So uh, definitely going to hang on to these buffalo nickels and the rest, like I said, I'll hang on to. That I'm definitely going to flip up that 1970 because it looks so nice. So with that, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. This was a lot of fun to make. I know it's shorter than my normal nickel videos, but 
If you watched my last dime video, I've just been really short on time and I'm about to disappear uh, for about eight or nine days. And I don't know if I'll be able to produce any content over that time. So I did want to try to get one more video out for you. So when I get back, I should have four to six boxes of halves to go through. I know I'm sitting on $500 worth of quarters, customer wrap quarters that I just haven't gotten to. So anyway, if you like this video, make sure you do drop down below, click that like button and leave me a comment. If you're new to the channel, make sure you click on that subscribe button and then click that little bell so you get every video that I post because I'd love you to be a, a long-term viewer of the channel. Love to see you around here in the comments and uh, see you watching my videos. Let me know you're here. Let me know you're new. Let me know if you're a new subscriber. I'd love to hear from you. Special shout out to all of my channel members. Thank you guys for supporting the channel each and every month. I really, really appreciate it. Um, actually, one of my members recently donated $50 uh, via PayPal, which is pretty amazing. And uh, I did buy myself a Dansko uh, Peace Dollar album. So I'll do a video on that when it shows up. And we're going to see if we can how much of that uh, Peace Dollar album will fill up. I did a, a Peace Dollar video recently from a, a Reddit sale. So we're going to plug all those in when the book comes in as well. So anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. Take care, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.